All right, so let's take a look at our units. As you can see at the top of the screen, we have uh, volume or liquid measure at the top, liters and milliliters. Below that, we have our solid measure, kilograms, grams, milligrams, and micrograms. Beneath that are the two rules that you have to know. If we're going from a small unit to a large unit, and that's relative, for instance, uh, you know, if I was going from milligrams to grams, I would move left. From a large unit to a small unit, I'd move right. If I was going from kilograms to grams, I would move right. Uh, we'll explain that in just a second. But how many spaces? Well, the difference between a kilogram and a gram is a thousand. So one kilogram is equal to a thousand grams. So one way that we can work with the metric system is just moving the decimal place. Uh, how many spaces, you ask? Well, three spaces. If something is a thousand times bigger than something else, um, it is three decimal places bigger. For instance, if I have one and I wanted to make something a thousand times bigger, I would just move the decimal one, two, three spaces. So by moving the decimal point three spaces, I can make something a thousand times bigger or conversely a thousand times smaller. Um, the difference between a gram and a milligram, likewise, a gram is a thousand times bigger than a milligram, so we would move the decimal place three spaces. The same for liters and milliliters. If I'm going from milligrams to micrograms, <clears throat> excuse me, again, a uh, milligram is a thousand times bigger than a gram, or excuse me, a milligram is a thousand times bigger than a microgram, so I would move three spaces. All right, let's put this into practice. Let's say I have sake of argument six liters. How many milliliters is that? Well, if I have six liters, I know that that is a from liters to milliliters that's going from a large unit to a small unit and I'll need to move my decimal place three spaces. But which direction? Well, if I'm going from a large unit to a small unit, I'll move right. So I have six. There's my decimal place. One, two, three. Replace the decimal. So 6 liters is equal to 6,000 milliliters. That was a fairly simple example, admittedly. Uh, but let's see, let's, let's look at something else. Let's say I had uh, 0 0.45 milligrams. And I wanted to know how many micrograms that would be. Alright, so 0 0.45 milligrams equals how many micrograms? Well here I'm going from milligrams to micrograms, so relatively speaking that's going from a large unit to a small unit. So I have 0 0.45 going from a large unit to a small unit. Again I'm going to move right, so going to go from here, 1, 2, 3, Ignore the leading zero. So I have 450 micrograms. Okay. Let's work another one. Um, let's say I had 15.7 grams. And you're asked to figure out how many kilograms that would be. Well, I'm going from, relatively speaking, a small unit to a large unit. So from small to large, I'll move left three spaces. So we have 15.7, 1, 2, 3 spaces. Rewrite that as 0 0.0157 kilograms. Okay, so so far we've only worked with um, units that are beside each other, like we went from liters to milliliters, or milligrams to micrograms, or grams to kilograms. What if it's farther away? So let's say that I want to move from, I don't know, 16 milligrams is equal to how many kilograms. So I'm going from a very small unit to a very large unit, as you can see up here. In fact, 
I need to move three spaces just to get to grams and an additional three spaces to get to kilograms. So in total, I'll move six spaces. Because I'm going from a small unit to a large unit, I'm going to move left. So 16, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That gives me 0 0.00016. Kilograms. Sometimes it's helpful for students to put these into perspective. Uh, so a kilogram is about the weight of a textbook, a gram is about the weight of a paper clip, a milligram is about the weight of a hair, and a microgram is about the, the weight of a speck of dust. Um, a liter you're probably familiar with because of, you know, uh, soft drinks. Um, you've probably seen two liters, so a liter would be half of that. Um, a milliliter, um, you might have learned already, uh, maybe not, uh, is 20 drops. A milliliter is a very small unit of measure. Um, it's five times smaller than a teaspoon, um, and, you know, uh, 30 milliliters make up a fluid ounce, if that's helpful to you. Let's work through a couple more. All right, so let's take uh, 17 milliliters and try to determine how many liters this is. Take a moment and decide which direction you're going to go. Alright, so I'm going from a small unit to a large unit, so I'm going to move to the left three spaces. All right, so you are given 17 milliliters and you've determined that is 0 0.017 liter. All right, let's work another. Let's say I have 1,780 micrograms. And I wanna know how many kilograms that is. All right, so here I'm going from a small unit, micrograms, all the way over to kilograms. So I need to use, I need to move three spaces to get to milligrams, three spaces to get to grams, and three more spaces to get to kilograms. So let's work this out. One, seven, eight, zero. One, two, three, gets me to milligrams. One, two, three, gets me to grams. One, two, three, gets me to kilograms. And this is going to be a silly small amount. 0 0.00000178 um, you'll disregard any sort of trailing zeros there you don't have to put it um, quickly talk about leading zeros and trailing zeros so let's say I have the uh, the number 0 0.070 um, this is considered a leading zero it's best practices to always put a zero to the left of the decimal place. Um, for instance, if I wrote this, you might not see the decimal there, but you would know it is set. But with a zero here, you would know it is 0 0.7. Without it, you might mistake it for a seven. However, trailing zeros like this guy <clears throat> aren't you aren't necessary. Um, they're just extra fluff. It'd be the same thing as writing eight as 8.000. Um, in some practices, it it uh, makes sense to do that. It kind of indicates a level of specificity. Um, say you had a scale, this would imply if you wrote this that your scale is accurate to the uh, thousandth place. But you know, uh, for our purposes, it, it doesn't really uh, help you at all. So just like you wouldn't write eight eight point zero zero zero, you wouldn't write point zero seven point zero seven zero. So again, you can disregard trailing zeros, but make sure you have your leading zeros there.